In this video, I'll be answering a question that came up in the Postman community forum. Grant wants to know how to handle a CSV response with Postman. So let's have a look. Hi, this is Valentine and welcome to another video on Postman, the RESTful API testing tool. If you're new to this channel and want to learn more about Postman testing, continuous integration and much more, the first step is to click the subscribe button and the bell icon so that you do not miss anything. Now let's get started with the video. As I was telling in the introduction, I wanted to show you in this video how to handle CSV responses with Postman. Now we have here a very clear example that came from Greg and he's getting this comma separated values list and he wants to basically make some assertions on this information and this is basically in a text format. It's uh, by default in Postman not possible to do anything with CSV. So basically want to see something like if this client ABC1234 actually had an invoice that was uh, 3500, for example. This is how the response of the API looks. And there are a couple of things we need to do in order to get this to work. And obviously because Postman doesn't offer any possibility of parsing this information, we need to rely on a third party JavaScript library to do the parsing for us. One very popular and well-documented JavaScript library that can do CSV parsing is PapaParse. And you can find it at papaparse.com. They also have a GitHub account. And here you'll have find basically a very good documentation with a lot of use cases on how to parse CSV files. So basically what we will need to do is to some th somehow integrate this library in Postman. And in order to do that, I will go to GitHub this is the repository of this project. And the file that we're actually looking for is this papaparse.min.js. This is basically a minified file of the entire library. You can see here that it's only one line. And what we'll do in this case, I'm gonna click here on raw and I'll copy the address that was given to me. Now in Postman, I created here a setup that basically does this thing. It calls this address that I've showed you previously from GitHub, grabs the latest version of this library, and then in the test tab, all I had to do is to set a global variable called Papa library. Now, if this is a global variable or an environment variable or what kind of variable you like, there's makes absolutely no difference. It's just important that the response that I get from this library, which looks like this, and it's called by the variable response body will be set to a global variable. And that is quite easy to see because if I'm going to inspect variables that I already have, I will see here that Papa library contains this long string here. Now, this is the first step. We are just grabbing this library, but still at this point, there's nothing happening. So let's move on to the next request that I have prepared for you. And we're gonna switch to the test tab. And what's happening here is that in one request, in the setup request, I saved the library once and now I have the possibility of reusing it in other location, other requests. And in order to do that, we're gonna take advantage of a very powerful but very dangerous function as well in JavaScript, eval function, which evaluates a string and basically executes this code, makes the code that we downloaded and saved to, as a string in this global variable, it activates it so that we can use it. And this will be available under this.papa. You can use this format, or if you want to make it easier for you when you're reading documentation, you can just define the variable papa and assign it to this papa and it would look exactly like in the documentation of the library. Now this is the setup part and you have to do this in every request that you're planning to do CSV parsing. The second step is to create a constant with the papa configuration. In this case, I'm instructing Papa to parse the header as well, because as you have seen in the request, in the response, there's given the header in this case. Uh, there are a lot of other use cases or a lot of other properties you can configure, all documented in the Papa documentation. And all you have to do is to change this object and add the properties to the respective values that you need. Now, this is basically the interesting part. This is where the body will be parsed, and so the response body will be parsed and 
the function that we're calling is papa.parse. So we're calling the parse function on the papa object. And we'll get a parse body. And this is parse body is basically a JSON object, which is the same, basically the same output, a very similar output to the one that Postman generates you when you're parsing a JSON format. And after that, basically working with this object is pretty easy. Now, I've introduced here a console log as well so that you can have a look at it. All the information that has been parsed in, is inside data. And here below is a simple test on how you can actually test that this worked properly. And in this case, uh, we want to make sure that client ABC103 was charged properly. And for that reason, uh, we are going to iterate over the response body. So data will, will contain an array where each item in the array is one line from the comma separated value list. And basically we're going to iterate it using this construct. So for we're going to initialize a variable called invoice and this will hold the current information. So when you're iterating over the array, invoice will always have the current value. Actually parsed body data is not really relevant. We can replace that with invoice so that I can easily see what's the current invoice in case you're doing some debugging. And then once I have an invoice, I will match a specific value. And only if this value is matched, I'll do an expectation here below. So basically I'm expecting after iterating all the values, when I find a client called ABC1234, I'm expecting that the invoice total will be 4,500. Now I actually included here a value that's a bit higher to make the test fail because I think it's always important to first make sure that your tests fail when you're writing them and then uh, to go and fix them. And last but not least, because we're using a global variable, I usually like after running a test collection just to clear things up so that I don't have any global variables hanging around with information that I don't need. Uh, it really depends on your workflow. You can put it in this request or you have a request at the end if you have multiple requests dealing with CSV formats. It's totally up to you. But it's a, a thing that I like to do. Okay, so let's hit the send button on this request. And you will see here that this is the response that I got. And fortunately, this, te this test is actually failing because I inserted the wrong value. And let me quickly fix you just to demonstrate that the test is working as expected. Of course, I'm getting this error now that cannot read property parse of undefined. This is totally fine because uh, once I've cleaned things up, I need to run the setup again. So I will quickly run the setup again. Go back to the solution, execute the test, and voila, everything is working fine. Now, the disadvantage of this solution is that you're basically relying on an external dependency. And of course, you can go to GitHub and go to a specific version, but every time there's something changing on GitHub or changing on the library, you have a dependency on that. So you have to take this into account whenever you're, wherever you're rolling these tests. Ideally, I would just make a copy of this library or something like that to store it on a local server or whatever you think it's a fit for your scenario. But just as well, we can just go to a specific version to a specific tag and fetch it from there. This is one way on how you can deal with CSV responses in Postman. Uh, I'm not saying this is the only way how you can do it, but you have to rely on a third party library that you need to include in your tests in order to make it possible. Now, Papa Parse is not the only library that can parse uh, CSV files. There are a lot of them. You can search them on GitHub or Stack Overflow or whenever you're uh, searching for such a library. I personally liked it a lot because it has a, it's easy to use. It has a clear documentation. It's clear it's very popular and it has a large user base. So for that reason, I will highly recommend this one. Hope you find this tutorial helpful and I'm really looking for feedback or any other questions that you have on Postman or any other interesting problems that you're dealing with. Just let me know, write a comment below and maybe I'll do a video on them. Make sure you check the video description because there I'll be posting a link to the collection that I've used in this example and you will find other resources as well. And see you next time at another tutorial.